Mm, yeah. This is an interesting colour. Oh, hello, everybody. We're going to carry on painting, but we're going to do it from the glory of my studio. Oh, the inner sanctum, I call it. So, Kathy, 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 come closer. Now, those of you that don't know me, my name's John. I've been in and around the art scene for the last 25 years, something like that, Timmouth, that is. Before then, I was based in London. Oh, look, there's old Judy out the window, look. In the yellow. Never mind about that, let's go. She's one of my erstwhile students, a very talented artist. Anyway, we're going to be looking at painting through the world of the lens. Through the world of the lens. With my magic sticks, with my magic hairy sticks. And I'm going to show you some stuff. We're going to start very much back at basics. Those of you who have worked with me before, you'll know all about this. But that's where you're going to start, okay? And I'll talk you through it all. Just have a quick sweep round the camera there, Sam, if you could. Just a look at some of the stuff I do. You know, oh, and that swish is a nut, eh? Hey? Mm -hmm. That gives you a clue as to what we're going to be doing today down there. Those two pictures, they're sweet, aren't they? Part of the forthcoming exhibition, by the way. Anyway, so, with that, I'll say enough of that nonsense. And to the table, to the table, to the table. Okay, everybody, um, first picture. Here we go. Now, this is the line drawing. If you can get in there, Sam, see that? Very, 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 very simple. Draw it properly. That's the first rule. Moving into the final picture, you're going to turn that line drawing into that painting. Do you see? So have a long, hard look at these before you start. Now, if you want a really, really sort of concise, um, detailed picture of that, um, just click on the um, link below in the description box and you'll get a really crisp, really crisp image. Hurrah! Right, now here we are, ready to go. Now I'm just going to talk you around some of the equipment first. Can you see me? Can you? Oh, good, good, good. Nice to hear, nice to hear. I can see you nodding back. Yes, well done everybody. I'm um, going to start off by explaining the paper. I like to use very thick watercolour paper. See that? Of course you can't, but it is thick. Look. The reason I use this is because it doesn't buckle. It soaks up the water and it gives me extra time to work. I'll, you'll see this when I'm working. Um, so that's the first thing. My second thing, we're going to paint very simple today, monochrome, just washes. There's a white and a Payne's grey. And these are student calibre, so they won't cost you very much. Um, and they're good enough. Um, for stronger colours, I like to get the artist quality, which is pricier. But you build that up slowly, then they'll last you a long time. Okay? Today I'm going to just be using basically these three brushes to paint with a bigger one, a middle one and a little one. It's as simple as that. Okay, I'll put them there like that, nicely in their special place. Do you see? All very nice in their special place. This is my palette, a nice white bit of china. Don't like plastic, don't really like tin and I like space to mixing. Remember this, your painting's 80% done there. 20% done here. Okay, it's very important. These are fundamental basics, but they're very important. Now, I know a lot of you seen me do all this lots before, but I urge you to, you know, to stick with this and just do this painting as simply as you can. Don't try to depict it exactly. Therein lies the, the um, opportunity for multiple error. Okay, you want to keep your errors as simple as possible. The painting, after all, is a series of errors that come together in the end, as I always said this. Um, two rules to remember, what are they? Okay, I'm sure some of you said it. Draw it properly. Paint it nicely. That's it. Okay, now I'm gonna get on. Let's go. <laughs> no, it's good, that's in the can. Yeah, well, yeah, it was like, oh, sh oh, God, yeah. We've got two bits in the can. They're two. Well. Oh, God's sake. Who's that? This is good. Hiya. Yeah, hi, Jenny. Could you just call me back in literally a minute? No, don't say a minute. Five minutes. Oh, five minutes. Five minutes we're going to be. Bye. Okay, so here we go. I didn't mention that I was only going to use three brushes. I, of course, lied. I'm going to use four, which is this one. Now, the reason I'm using this, I don't know if you can see it, it's a completely clean brush. So I'm going to lay my wash on 
into this area of the painting here, which you've guessed by now, I'm sure, is the sky. Okay, so look. Plenty of water going on. Might even pour a little bit. Oh, look at that. Oh, my giddy auntie. So the sky area, the area at the top. Don't go into this area here. Try and avoid the chimney pops, because that's what they are. Um, in fact, no, don't. You will hear a lot of me contradicting myself. Um, that's the first example. Um, but there you go, I'm getting a nice heavy spread of water right over the whole area there. You see, and you notice, the first thing you notice is that the paper's not buckling. It's all staying nice and smooth and lovely. It's not buckling. You see, and, it's, and the beauty of this paper is it's very porous, so, it, so it's soaking in. It's going to give you a nice long time to work on this area. Um, but having said that, you're got, not going to be. You're going to be painting very briefly and simply on this area. The vast majority of the time for doing this sky is watching and waiting. Okay. So now we're going to nurture the surface, which means I'm just going to move it around like this. Can you see that? Sort of. Yeah. There you are. Now I'm just moving it around. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, it's beautiful. Beautiful, nice and easy and slowly, with loving care. Now, I'm going to be doing this for a good couple of three minutes. There's a hell of a lot of water, so what I will be doing is every now and again just draining some off. And look at that. Yeah. That's just going right in there. Now, I'm not going to bore you with this for too long, but I will be doing this for um, a couple of minutes. So we will we'll be coming back shortly, and I'll be ready to paint. Um, and then I'll, I'll get painting. Okay. That's enough. Okay, now, so here we go. I'm now ready to paint my sky. Um, I don't know if you can quite see the glaze there, but you're just still getting a little sort of ridge of water at the edge of the painting that's sort of just about how you want it now we're going to be very very brief here okay i'm going to use this bigger brush here i'm going to get my paint onto the palette get it onto the palette just before you paint so we want to work with as fresh paint as possible it's judy again walking past look it's great working here in the old uh, what's it called um in the studio here in voyage you see the world go past, which is a really lovely thing. Anyway, here we go. There's my water. You see, a little bit of water, not much. Most of the water you need is already on the surface, okay? So now let's mix. I want this really dark, so look at that, it's a very thick mixture. I want quite a dark, heavy sky here. So let's move that out of the way. Now, for those of you who haven't painted for a while, it's a bit, ooh, but let's just keep it brief. Lovely. If you can move that brush as fast as you as fast as possible, it helps. So here we go. I'm just going to a bit of white now to ruffle up that edge. That across is nice, isn't it? Sometimes I even like to be really cheeky and just do this sort of thing. Get straight onto the old malarkey. Move that in. But remember this: you clean your brush every time. You make one visit to the to the uh, painting from the palette. So the journey is brush to palette, and then a little, little bit more, and that's probably all I'm going to do. Clean the brush. Yeah, this is me, but I don't particularly like this grainy bit, so the way I'm going to get out of that is get some clean white and just move it in. See that? Nice. Don't be thinking sky when you're doing this, just be thinking nice. Don't fiddle. As soon as you've done that one bit, into the water, clean the brush. Very important, okay? Just get rid of that bit there. Now I'm just going to wait a little bit, I'm going to have a little bit of a statement going on. This is a statement painting, in fact it's building up to a very important exhibition I'm doing next year concerning basically the edgelands of urban centres and the, um, the, the connection and disconnection of urban and rural landscapes and such like. Just fancy a bit of dark there, see, clean the brush. Now with a smaller brush I'm waiting for it to dry a little more and I'm going to do some cheeky emissions from these um, chimney pops. 
I think I call them. But again, it's just the same technique. So a little bit of water on the brush, okay? Get to the sort of thick paint that you need. Look at that, you see the palette there? It's not going anywhere, it's not running anywhere. That's stodgy paint, that's stodgy paint on my um, palette. And this is a nice sort of sky. So let's start off with this one. I'm gonna come across the top and then wiggle it out. Now that's a bit flat, so I need to clean the brush. Make it a bit darker and have it a bit darker from there. Now you've got a bit of body in the emission, you see. <gasps> Look at that. Oh my giddy arm. That is quite something. It's quite dramatic, saying quite a few things. It's a really quite a haunting painting already, really. Clean the brush. Come in again with thick, stodgy paint to the top of this tall fella here and just bring him out. Bring him out, bring him out. There we are, and let's just have it all dark there like that and into the, and then it just goes into the sky. And look at that. That is drama. Now you see, with this area here that we've left light, it's gonna really bring out the, the drama of these two um, emission um, sticks. That's another word for chimney pops. They're not actually chimney pops, because chimney pops have the little pops on the top. These don't have the pops, they're just the fat, aren't they? <coughs> oh, I do apologize. And that bit's ready. So now I just need to wait for all this to dry, okay? And then I'm gonna work on this area here. So that will take a while to dry. Um, so I'll just go and do something, make a sarni or something. Maybe do that. You didn't see that, by the way. I, don't, I didn't do that. But that looks beautiful, doesn't it? Now we just leave that, okay? Actually, props, what I'll do is Okay, well, now we're back in the, what's it called? I've left this sky for a while for it to dry. Now I'm ready to work on this area here. Don't try and work on this area before this is dried. Okay, at least dry down here. If you work on this area, it's just going to dissolve into the sky. Could obviously lead to um, quite a, um, a neat, um, what's, the, what's it called? Um, technique, um, effect. But on this occasion, I want it to be quite flat. So there we go. Now I'm going to put a little wash with my special wash brush with clean water. So let's remove that jar and bring this jar in here, you see. I think it's um, shoot fruit, it says there. Oh, uh, oh, oh, blissful, it says. Very nice. Anyway, it doesn't have to be in that sort of pot. You can have it in any jar you like. <laughs> he does talk nonsense, doesn't he? Right, you ready? Just a nice little... Remember, the beauty about doing it this way, I'm doing it sort of sideways, have you noticed that? All my, I do a lot of sideways painting because I just like this movement more than that. I find this a lot easier to work with than that, okay? So that's why I work on the side. If it doesn't work for you and you have to see what you're doing, fair enough. But that's how it works for me. And so it's just a little wash. Don't really have to let this one soak in so much because we're not working on different levels as it were it's just much flatter wash so put that down i want it to be slightly lighter at the top and we'll have to get really dark at the bottom for maximum impact <coughs> it lends heft to the painting here's a little example of what i mean something like that you see all this dark at the bottom this is the sort of thing we're going for okay but only in black and white with a bit more drama with a bit more of a statement because i'm inserting the um 
the urban edge lands into the rural landscape, um, which is something I'm very interested in. So there we are, mixing up on the pallet, nicely thick, 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 look at that. I'm just going to run it across like this. Like that. And then quite a little sort of shuffle. Then I'm going to clean the brush, go to the water again. Clean the brush. I want it really dark at the bottom. Whoa, look at this. So look what I've done. Just come straight from the tube, I hang up, and then just shuffling them across like a good one. Whoa, you can even cheer. It's always good to cheer. Because it loosens you up a bit. Oh, get on. Look at that. It looks like it could be anything. It could be a rough sea, couldn't it? It could be anything. It goes back to my original point of draw it properly so that's a nice line, a nice angle. Paint it nicely. And that's what I'm doing. I'm painting this nicely. Now I'm going to, to just to firm up my horizon there, I'm going to clean this brush and go to a smaller brush. Let's see here. Something somewhere in the middle like that. Yeah, which is a number four. The large one I used was a number 10, I think. Yes, 10. And then my little one that I might use a bit later is a triple zero. Again, you get these from Picture This, down at the, um, just off the triangle there. So there we are. Just getting a little bit of water on. I just want the horizon just to be a little darker, just to do that cheeky little thing. So here, I'm working a little bit more exact. So I'm steadying my hand on the area here and just shuffling the brush down on the horizon line like this. Just if you fancy a little bit darker, just go with your, what's it called? There we are, look. Lovely. I'm just going to leave a little bit like that. I've just realised schoolboy error I've made. It's always good when I make schoolboy errors because it shows you that we can all make schoolboy errors. Um, really, I should have completely waited for this to dry and then done the chimney pops first because they're emerging from behind the landscape. Yeah? So really, they should have been done first. It's no big deal. It's going to work anyway because I'll be able to shuffle some paint over the bottom of the, the chimney pops anyway. Okay, but quite, quite like. Here's another thing. I've run out of black paint or Payne's grey here. So what I was trying to do is dig some up from underneath. Done. Go to your tube. Put a little bit on there. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. You don't need a lot. Just a little bit. Oh, look. There's old Lance out there. Look. Yeah, Skippy, they call him. Skippy, Skippy. Hey, and that's sort of, that's quite nice, isn't it? And then maybe that, and so you can just play a little bit. But so that's it. You're just making that area and that area. Now you can see already we've only applied paint to two areas of this painting, but in quite a dramatic fashion. Very thick the paint's gone on very very thick, um, meaty, muscular. I call it very muscular. So that's really good. And I'm just loving that, and the drama of it all, and the statement of it. Now we're going to probably wait. A lot of people like to use a hairdryer at this point. I don't. I think it's the thin end of the wedge, and I just like saying that, thin end of the wedge, just to dry it off. What I would do, I would move it aside and get on with another painting. Okay? That's what I would do. Um, so, but now I really have to wait for this to dry completely. Okay? So there we go, clean the brush. It's at this point, you go and make yourself a cup of tea. Or if it's past six o'clock, get yourself a G&T or a glass of wine, whatever your tipple is. Um, that's always good. But I'm loving that. I'm loving the drama of it. Okay, now then. So everything's nice and dry on my surface here. I've waited for quite a while, got on with other things in the meantime, which is, um, you know, the way ahead, really. Now, what I'm going to do now is paint this area here, which is the big fat chimney pop of the bubblegum factory, um, whatever it is. All right, now, in a sense, you're basically painting a mini sky in here. It's just the same technique. Um, not so much water, but I'm just going to put a little dab of water in this area. Not all the way over, just so as it helps carry the paint, okay? Now, what we want, we don't want to paint, we want it to be sort of distinct against its background, against its light background, but at the same time, we don't want it to be flat. So we're not going to paint the silhouette, okay? 
So that means, even though it's going to be dark, I want to get my white out. You know, they tell you never to use white and um, the watercolours are purest, but they're wrong. Um, there we are, and some dark as well. Now I'm going to mix this up. This is where we are getting a bit more dainty, so I'm going to have to whisper a little bit while I do this, because otherwise you need to whisper when you're doing st dainty stuff. So I'm going this side, I'm going to make lighter. So there we are, look at that, it's lovely, isn't it? With this brush here right up hard, close to the edge. Very nice. Then clean the brush up a little bit on my rank. So we clean again, now we're going to make it a bit darker, okay? And go around the edge there, so that's, it could almost be like, Pretty much what we did up here. It's not much different, is it? It's all about your techniques, learning your techniques and learning when and how to apply them. So it's a nice little bit of delicate work there. Now I was working this way around to get the point of the brush at my edge. So I could see the point of the brush, I could see my edge. I need to repeat the trick on this side, but in order to do that, I want to turn the picture now upside down. So I'm working with my point against that edge there okay so I'm cleaning my brush again I want this to be really dark so I'm going for the full Monty just dark there look at that move that bad boy over there and then come in really really tight keep it tight keep it tight moving it up there and you can see that we've got a little bit of shape here now I'm moving a bit down there against the horizon that's a bit of horizon you can see that little bit of horizon I've had to leave there Basically where I really should have done this first before I did that. Hey ho, these things happen, school by error. Now I want to be hard against this line, so I'm turning it round again. So I'm now working on the side. I've moved down to a smaller brush, because this is really dainty now. Dark again, and we're just going to get right across the top. A slight curve across the top, and you see my water little wash I put on still working the paint still working for me see that and now you've got a heavy a lovely dark dramatic chimney against a sort of quite light backdrop but we've got the shape as well it's not a, it's not a silhouette I'm going to repeat the trick with the old big long chimney so I'll go this way to get this edge again I'm not going to try and do it in one sweep because I want to keep this line ever so, ever so straight. So I'm going to anchor my hand like so, and then cajole the hairy stick up the pipe, which is the chimney, <laughs> which is the chimney pop, like so. Nicely, you see what I mean? Nice. See, the paint's quite thick, but it's also got a fluidity about it. So now I'm going to darken up this side. Oh no, I've gone, it doesn't really matter. I've got paint all over my hand now, you see, so I don't want to be, um, what's it called, so just clean your hand up a little bit, like that. <sighs> nice. And then I'm going to go on, because I need to lead my hand onto the painting, you see, to steady myself, and to get down this side of the chimney pop, which here is, here I go. I'm making it slightly darker, so it's got a little bit of shape, not quite so, this. this is a really, really simple statement picture, obviously. Um, so far with one, two, three, four. Simple as that. Okay. Get my tiny little brush. I'm going to go dark across the top of my chimney pop like that. And getting it as neat as I can. See, that's a whole different way of painting. So much neater, much tighter. So it's about knowing when to be tight and when to be loose. And now I just need to marry this up, which I should have done. This sort of thing here, like I've just got, see that? And that might cause my support. Look at that, beautiful, beautiful. Just firm the bottom of this chimney pop up here. And it couldn't really be a simpler sort of thing. I've just got a bit of texture in the chimney pop. Now you might want to do that, just get some dark paint and just run a little something down into the light of the chimney pop. Just gives it a little something extra, you know, so it's what I call a money shot. Um, it's not 
50 pound money shot that one I'd say that's just about a 10 pound money shot right so that's it for now um, I'm gonna just put it down let it dry and then I'm gonna finish off with doing a little tree here which will be a slightly different technique again and it will also emphasize the the rural urban nature of the whole piece okay so I'm now going to turn this off and we'll come back to that in a second though that's uh, Italian for second okay so this is where we are now you see very simple but a hugely dramatic piece of work so far very simple very basic stuff but just remember none of the, it's basic but none of it's um easy so it's all about practice and rigor so we'll be going over things in the coming weeks reiterating stuff repetition rigor it's one of my watch words rigor and that, I don't mean the rigor brush I mean rigor anyway I'm moving on now I did say earlier that I was only going to use those three brushes I lied again this is what you call a scrubby brush it's a rubbish old brush and that's what I want to use to build my tree up I'm going to put a bit of tree here so a little bit lower down the line to for composition it's nearer so it looks small um, it will look tiny in comparison to these monsters behind okay so just a tiny little bit of water and I've got completely dry paint here so what I'm gonna do is get a little, little bit more dark in there and then just get my scrubby brush with a bit of so really dark gray not quite black gray as it were and then not dab but scrub like this and so we get that nice feathery edge you see that Oh, oh, just feel it. Oh, wow. Look at that. Simple as that. Don't overdo it. And now you've got the main sort of shape of the tree itself. Now we're going to get in with this taut, tiny, tiny, tiny brush. Clean this brush. Get him out of the picture. Come in with a little three zero. Dip a little bit of water into the end of him. See, I didn't clean that brush properly. Very naughty, very naughty. So I'm just cleaning it off a bit on the palette there. And now this is a matter of, I would practice these thin lines a little bit before you get on to doing them for real. Just on a piece of scrap like this, let's say. And so you just want to anchor your hand. I always pull these lines towards me, so I'll probably turn the picture upside down. This is to do the trunk of the tree, okay? There we are, just like that. Look at that, very nice and thin, that's gorgeous. Shove that down there. Get a little bit more water on just to loosen it up a little bit. I'm gonna come in here, look. Do this towards me. Oh, and there it is, look at that. I did make that look easy. These little lines are not necessarily that easy. But then you've got this sort of beautiful little juxtaposition of somewhere back here is the city here we have the urban edgelands moving into rural that's what my next year's exhibition is all about just sort of give it a little plug it'll be here at voyage voyage sorry fair trade anyway one last little bit this is optional but this is fun i like to do a little bit of spattering just give it a little bit of just loosen all this front up a bit, give it a bit of drama. So I get the old paint grey out to begin with. Use a brush about this size, I'd say about a nine or a ten. Get it a little bit wet, loosen this paint up. Loosen it up, loosen it up. You don't really know where it's, what's going to happen here, it's a bit exciting. So then finger out like this, not that way, you'll hurt yourself. You see that I've partitioned this off then just whack this against his finger here. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Little one, a little one. Just a nice little one. So that tells me I need to be a bit wetter. <gasps> Anything could happen. Oh, there, look at that one. Oh! Now I need to come probably this way. It's just loosening up, giving it a bit of, there we are. I do like this sort. Now I'm gonna put a sticky one on and hopefully it comes out in a, oh, look at that one. Oh, but I missed. Oh, so aim higher, aim higher. So I'm up here. Oh! <laughs> Oops, I've left me what's open there. But now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna switch tack, clean the brush, clean the brush, and go for some real drama. 
down here. As I say, this is optional. There are people out there who I know, and who I'm mentioning no names, who don't really like doing this at all. Also, um, do wear a penny or something, because you will get messy doing this. So that's the white. Now just a little bit of water on there. Just loosen that white up a bit. Then this is gonna look what, smart as a carrot, look. <gasps> oh, just little bits, oh. I think it just gives it something. And you can do, you know, as much of this as you want, or, oh! That was a bit much, so come back that way. And it's just given it some sort of drama. Look at that, eh? It doesn't really depict anything. It was never the idea there. It was just to sort of, you know, give ourselves a little bit of joy in there. But it does, it is, it adds to the, they are little money shots, you see. I think they're pretty good, they're pretty neat. All that's left to do there, really, you can put a couple of birds in the sky if you want, and um, that's optional again. I might do that later, but basically, sign it, frame it, flog it. <laughs> so there you go, there endeth the first lesson. I hope you enjoyed. Now, what I would suggest you do, um, I'll probably mention this at the top of the show, I like to call it a show, um, would be to watch the film through, all the way through, and then watch it through again and paint bit by bit with me. But watch it through first and then go through it again. Okay, lovely to see you. Can't wait to get back. Oh. Of course, I've forgotten the most important part of the whole process is taking this cellar tape off. You notice I didn't explain that at the beginning. I put the tape round the picture in order to contain it. But the real reason is so that when it's all finished, I should really go and wash my hands now because I want a really clean edge. Fine, <gasps> there's an edge. Get it off like this. Take your time, take your time. Don't rush it. Get some, grow some good nails. Oh, there we are. Now put it away from the, <gasps> look at that clean edge. Oh, and now we go for the bottom. Bottom one's gonna be crisp as enough. Look at that, oh, so I'm not in shop there, mate. Oh, screw it up, put it over here somewhere in a special place, right there. There we have, now this one comes to the top, oh. Oh, and you get this lovely clean edge. Oh, there. And that's the very basic first monochrome picture that we do together. Even these bits are optional. You don't have to put that in. It's going to be just the tree, as in this one here. But you get the idea. Okay, brilliant. Thank you so much.